to Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS, presented by Fisherman's Marine and Outdoor. Good morning, everyone. I'm Owen Hayes. You're watching Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS, presented to you by Fisherman's Marine and Outdoor, and uh, supported by Brad. <laughs> How's everybody's morning going? Hopefully, you got some plans going forward, right? Now, yesterday, we talked about how river levels were going to change and that there might be that small little window before they blow out. Well, guess what? In 24 hours, they somehow changed their forecast, which kind of killed what my plans were. It might still work out, but things changed a little bit. Now, I think probably for the better. If you are completely focused right now on chasing winter steelhead, if you look at the rivers going forward for the next four or five days, you should just be going nuts. My favorite situation, high water, right? They're gonna, it's going to drop out, but not at least based on the forecast for a few days. Well, today, our special guest in studio is Cameron Black from Guy Gone Catching Guide Service. And we're going to talk about steelhead fishing, different things that you can do to be more successful. High water, low water, like we were just talking about. But with the high water that we might have, it's going to be stable, right? Rather than just being a bounce straight up and kind of holding there and dropping off, it's at least forecasted to stay stable locally and along the coast. Now, that is a darn good thing but it can sometimes make it a bit of a challenge finding them. Now, yes, we've talked about this close to the bank, this and that, but there's things that you can do to be more productive and more successful, and we'll see what kind of info we can pluck uh, from the mind of Cameron Black, and uh, we'll see how it might be able to help you out as well. He brought in a couple of different rods, a couple of different setups, and I think the one that I'm gonna dissect and see how much info we can get out of him on uh, is going to be his chandeliering setup. You don't know that I, that kind of caught my eye. I've been fishing that way a long time. Remember, you've seen how I fish with that fixed float and that lead down there. Most professionals are like, what the heck are you doing? It's a very similar concept. We'll find out why he does it that way and, and why it's also become very, very, very popular uh, in low water conditions, but also when water's high, depending on the situation that you're in. But we'll cover that ground when we get Cameron on uh, here in just a little bit. Also, we're going to have uh, your Chevy Silverado Tech Tip of the Week, and we will find out uh, what kind of info that might help you out with, because I don't even know what it is. Forgot all about it until I just looked at it on my script. At least I'm being honest. Uh, of course, this upcoming segment, we're going to have river levels for you and check in with Katie and find out what the weather is going to really do. And uh, we will have a bunch of photos that you've all been sending in here in just a couple of minutes. And I'm pretty sure our phone lines are working. So if you have questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Maybe even a question for Cameron himself. It's easy. Call us up on this. Uh, I almost said it the wrong way. Viewer hotline, 503-548-6777. Questions, comments, reports, like always. But again, if you have something specific for Cameron, don't be shy. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and along with that, looks like we actually do have one that's come in. Oh, interesting. Should I take a call now or do photos first, Ryan? Let's take Porter. This is, this is going to be, for some, I just want you to relax. And it, everybody can have conversations, okay? So just relax. It's an interesting topic. We've talked about it many times here on the show over the years, but uh, things have been getting interesting when you're referring to Oregon wolves and so many different things released in Colorado. Porter, what do you got for everybody? Yes, uh, good morning, Owen. Good morning. Um, yeah, I have an article in the paper about um, in the Ben uh, Bulletin that Oregon was sharing uh, a week before Christmas that uh, Colorado had a ballot measure in 2020, and they passed it. They wanted to introduce wolves into the state of Colorado. So they went to their neighboring states, and three of them decided they didn't want to be involved. But Oregon was very giving, and they decided to give them five wolves to be introduced into the state of Colorado. Uh, yeah, I actually saw the same article. Uh, they, there was actually, uh, on a national level, they actually um, had a story that had been run on that. I can't remember what source that was. What were your thoughts on that, Porter? When you read that article, what were you thinking? Uh, well, it's going to be the thing of the future. I, actually, there were wolves in Colorado already that came over from Wyoming, kind of like the wolves Oregon came over to, from Idaho that were introduced in Idaho. So I think they're going to be spreading around anyway. And also in the article, they said they plan on releasing 30 to 50 more here in the next few months. So 
My own personal take on this, not that of uh, necessarily of that of, of uh, gray media, um, is absolutely insanity. Uh, it, it makes, there is such little sense made by what they're trying to accomplish or what they're trying to do that it's just, we're, we're all dumber for even thinking or talking about this topic. And the folks that are making these decisions, honestly, how in the world did they even get in the position to make these decisions? It'd be, I'd be shocked if they could walk and chew gum at the same time. Now, again, that's my own personal opinion, not necessarily that of gray media. If you're talking about Colorado needing wolves from the state of Oregon, which is a state that doesn't even admit that they are even here until just a handful of years ago, we literally had the folks from ODFW on my set unwilling to answer the question if there were wolves in Oregon. Now, this is 2018, 2019, for crying out loud. And it's such a short period of time. Now we've got so many, they want to ship them to Colorado where they already have them. It's nuts. And what they've done to some of the drainages in Wyoming, Montana, Colorado, Idaho, Oregon. You can go to areas now where we hunt elk in September, and there are no elk. And if they are there, they're so scared to death that if they bugle, that they're gonna get charged and eaten by the wolves. I actually got hunted a couple of years ago by wolves in Oregon. So you, for me, Porter, it is just one of the dumbest things, and it's just sad that people will allow this to happen um, in 2024, but I guess it's just par for the course. When things just completely d dissolve into chaos in the woods, and they're wondering why there are no elk, no more deer, no more, uh, small animals, anything left but just predators, and then maybe something will happen. But it really is insanity what, what they're doing. And, and it's crazy that a, a, a knuckle-dragging television host from Oregon in some way is smarter than what these experts are. And I know that I'm right. I mean, there's just no way that I'm wrong. And there's a reason why there are it's countless people like that are so lines, frustrated with it. It's kind of like what the sea lions did to the, are doing to the fish. True, but at least what they've done with sea lions here in Oregon and Washington, uh, uh, referring to the main stem Columbia in particular, is that they've actually taken the steps to be proactive, you know, with them, right? They, they're willing to do or take the steps to take care of that predator problem because they did after a very long period of time when we lost our populations of sturgeon, our breeding population of sturgeon are gone, right, everyone, if you're unaware. In the main stem Columbia, it is completely a 180 from what it was just 20 years ago, right? Those breeding populations are gone. Now, if they eliminated all those sea lions, it's gonna take that long for them to come back because it takes 20 to 30 years before they become mature enough to actually spawn. So we've already wasted that opportunity, so they are actually doing something about it. I just hope that they don't wait that long to watch all the elk herds disappear in Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and Oregon before they go, oh my God, maybe we shouldn't have put all these wolves into the woods and now the wolves are starving and all the elk and deer are gone. What are we gonna do? We're gonna ship in whitetail from uh, Minnesota, uh, you know, from the Midwest someplace because we've got to replace uh, the mule deer that are now gone and the Columbia blacktail that would be gone. You're talking about such fragile species that to introduce wolves is just insanity. And listen, I gotta stop. Porter, forgive me, I gotta stop, man. I literally could keep going on here and I gotta cut away. I gotta be some sort of a professional at, at, I mean, to the smallest degree. Uh, but thanks for your phone call. It is very frustrating and for all of you, it's well worth looking into. It's just absolute insanity on what they're planning on doing. Now, let's take a look at some of the photos that you've all been sending in. Uh, we're gonna show you exactly how to send those in. First, okay, everyone, pause. This is hilarious. Is this actually how this, this photo came in, Ryan? Does it actually say cinnamon teal? <laughs> All right, first off, Jeffrey, love you, man. Uh, but that would be a green, a green winged drake and uh, very, very common here in the Northwest. Uh, we do get cinnamon teal that come through here. Very, very few. Um, I don't kill teal very often. Um, <laughs> I've only seen a couple of cinnamon teal in my lifetime and that ain't one of them. But it's a beautiful bird, what that is right there, and arguably the most delicious one that we target here in the Northwest or throughout the country. Beautiful bird. Anyway, thanks for sending that in, Jeff. We, we appreciate it. Uh, hatchery hog. Yes, it is. That is an absolute broodstock program fish. Thank you, everyone that participates in broodstock programs, because that's where that fish came from. Bottom line, hatcheries are the way to go for a reason. 
Uh, yeah, what a dandy. Thanks for sending that in, Larry. We appreciate it. Appreciate that. Makes me just Jones. I'm a week and a half away from getting out to chase these steelhead around, and I'm looking forward to it already. Noah's elk. Uh-oh. We call that a freezer elk, everyone? Uh, yeah, perfect. Excellent job. Well done. Um, looks like Lori Miller sent that in. Thank you. Uh, excellent job feeding the family. Here's another one. Look at that. Quentin's first elk. Dandy. God, I love that. Just imagine if you couldn't send your kids out there when they're in their teens and want to learn how to be in the woods, how to take care of themselves, uh, go and hunt elk and deer and everything else. But they're gone because the wolves wiped them out. Okay, see, I'm getting sidetracked again. Forgive me. Uh, but yeah, great photo. We love to see that. Uh, Short-lived season. Yes, it was. For a number of different reasons, and most of the reasons not what everyone complained about. But it is what it is. Short-lived season. Aaron, thanks for sending it in. Those are some dandies. Nice ones. Uh, there's a teal hunt. Teal shoot. Mike, thanks for sending that in. Look at that pit blind. And the, even the dog's got a pit blind. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, teal and widgeon. Beautiful shoot. Nothing but deliciousness there. Mike, thanks for sending that in. Uh, we're going to get to exactly how you do it, everyone. It's very simple. Three generations. Kevin's sending it in. Yeah. Looks like uh, granddad, dad, and, and, and son. Very, very cool. Nice, op nice photo. Chasing some Chinook around. And, uh, yeah, that's what we do it for. I don't know how many times I've had to say it. We do it because it's perfect meat. Uh, download that Fox 12 app. Find out their GPS. Scroll down. It'll show you how to upload your photos and video. And we will show you off at the beginning of each one of our shows, so don't be shy. Uh, there's other ways you can do it, too, on our Facebook page, if you wish, uh, or our email. Does anybody email anymore, Ryan? We do get a few? Okay. I'll leave it to Ryan. I'm terrible at that stuff. Anyway, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. We'll have the report segment. I'm going to keep it kind of short. I didn't get out yesterday. I want to save as much time as I can for Cameron Black from Gone Catching Guide Service. We're going to talk steelhead uh, throughout the show. We'll be back in just a minute.